Fred, we're at this conference, The Physics of Information. It's uh, very interesting to understand the nature of information in science. Uh, but what is uh, really fascinating is that some of our colleagues here would have us believe that information is the singularly most fundamental thing about reality. It's the deepest ground that you can go, that everything is built up from information. Without addressing that specifically, which is maybe more philosophical than scientific, you work in astrophysics. So when you think about what is information in astrophysics, uh, what does that mean? Well, it means a lot of different things. So one of the remarkable things about the universe is that it contains structures. It contains complex, interesting structures of all kinds. The simplest ones that we can describe are we have complex nuclei. Instead of having just protons, we have protons that have combined into helium and lithium and deuterium and then later oxygen and all the way up to iron. So we have complex nuclei. So the universe contains structures. Those nuclei also get together later and form stars. The stars live in larger structures called galaxies. The galaxies are organized into still larger scale structures that we call the large scale structure of the universe. Right. And all of these structures are both interesting, they contain information, and they're complex. So the issue that I'm struggling with, that I'm interested in and why I'm at this conference, is that I want to know how to measure the information content okay. of those con constituents of the universe. So uh, let's describe, how, how do you do that? How do you, if you talk about the information content of a structure, a planet, a star, a galaxy, what, what are the ways you go about doing that? Well, I think the problem is that there's more than one way to do it, and there's no universally agreed upon ways to do it. So this conference is very much a cutting edge conference in the sense that we are struggling with which definition of information to use, which definition of information will actually give us useful information about the universe, which way we'll characterize it. Right, right. So um, one example due to um, Claude Shannon is that you can write down a quantity that describes how much information is contained in a signal once you know the probability distribution for that signal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So many of the astrophysical quantities that we talked about, let's say the distribution of elements, can be written in terms of a probability distribution. So I can write down the information content of that probability distribution, mm, mm. which gives me the information contained in the sample or the distribution of chemical elements in our universe. Mm. Now, that quantity will be a function of time. In the early universe, there's only protons. Sure. That probability distribution is simple. The information content is zero. After nucleosynthesis, we've made heavy elements. We get a bigger information content. After stars have formed and made heavier elements all the way up to iron, we get even more interesting information and the information content grows again. Later on when the universe starts to age too much, if protons decay or if they don't decay either way, the information content will go back down. Mm -hmm. If the protons decay, everything goes back down to hydrogen and we have no information. Mm -hmm. If protons don't decay, everything will actually fuse into iron mm -hmm. and then we still have only one, dis one mm -hmm. kind of element mm -hmm. and the information content mm -hmm. goes to zero. Right. So, if that's one, me that, that does provide one measure of information in the universe. And it's just a, it doesn't tell us anything new. It gives us a new way to think about what we already know. So what you're saying about information in astrophysics is more that information is like a telescope. It's a, it's a means of understanding and seeing what's there. It's a measure of what's uh, out there. But it's not the fundamental thing that is out there. So. In, in trying to get a metaphor here, it'd be closer to uh, some sort of a, a, a litmus test, a measuring probe, a telescope, or something to see it, as opposed to an ultimate theory like quantum mechanics. Yes, that's at Is least that how fair? that's how I, as an astrophysicist, right. astrophysicist, would see it. I'd also like to make one other distinction, and that is that if you follow the information content as we've been talking about, then it turns out that the more random the distribution is, the more information it contains. So the most interesting things in the universe negotiate this compromise between being the most um, random and have the most information and those that are the most simple and have the least information. So there's a complexity compromise. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we're struggling with here at the conference is how to define complexity in an unambiguous and useful way. And that's work that's still ongoing. And, and to be useful in astrophysics, what would information have to be like? Well, it would have to tell us something that we don't already know right. or give us a way to characterize things more usefully than how we already do. And um, we're still developing that. So everything is still under construction. <laughs>